I think this segues nicely into uh, the danger of bright, shiny objects. The, the what we really want. The, the the other thing we wanted to talk about. It is a bright, shiny object. Then, uh, business owners, successful business owners, where when they when they reach the top of a mountain, they don't tend to look down the mountain and go, "Whoa, look how far we've come." They tend to look at the peak up there and go, "Fuck's sake." There's another peak we've got to climb. Oh, great. Off we go. Little do they know, at the top of that peak is some some mountain lines that are going to move your face off. There's a reason that you're at the peak you're at. Um, furthermore, there's a reason we do this in our onboarding calls. We ask, what marketing activities have you done in the past? And they'll, they'll, nine times out of ten, they tell us a marketing activity and they say it went really fucking well. So we turn up on the onboarding call and we say, no, oh, you said this worked well. Then tell me more about it. Oh, yeah, fucking work gangbusters, this, that, and the other. We go, so why'd you stop? Well, I got too busy. Ah, uh, well. Okay, and you've joined us for what reason? Not busy enough. First order of business is to turn this back on. <laughs> and they oh, hired us. Yeah. They came to us for new systems, new techniques, completely forgetting the shit that got them to where they are. And it will take them 50% of where they want to go next. They just need us to top up that other 50%. But they're, they're, they're halfway there on their own. It's, it's mental. I had a sales call earlier this week, a couple of days ago. This is the Thursday, this was Tuesday. And the guy was telling me he wanted to ramp up his business and he'd done a load of cold outreach for him. It's really effective. And then he stopped for family reasons. Um, and now he wanted to, to get, get back on track and do all this stuff. And I, I just said to him, well, mate, maybe this is me, man, but why don't you just fucking do what you did before? Why, why, why bother with us? Why spend money with us when you don't need to? And he was shocked. He was like, and then he started laughing as like he was embarrassed. He said, I don't know. That's a really good question. He says, yeah, yeah, you could be wasting your time talking to me. And I said, I want to take your money for nothing. You, you might as well just go and do this by yourself. You know? Seriously. And he's uh, like, but, but then we went through it. And he, he did have some legitimate reasons to keep yeah, talking he to me. But well, he, he, he quite rightly said, I, I don't know why it worked last time. And I want to do it better because it was hard. He's autistic like me, and talking to people is, is quite exhausting. And as you know, our sales system is predicated on cutting people out as quick as possible, so I don't get exhausted. But, yeah. but you know, he'd done something, it worked. He had to stop doing it for various reasons, legitimate reasons. Now he wants to, to, to start his business off again, and rather than pick up the reins where he's left the other, he just comes to us to spend a shitload of money, five figures. I said, yeah, you don't need us, man. Just get up, go back and do this. Why not? I don't want to take your money for nothing. Yeah, it, it's funny because I said the exact same thing to him on the uh, three hours. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I framed it a little bit differently. I used the assumptive. I said, "So this worked really well, right?" And he went, "Yeah." And I said, "So what happened when you turned it back on?" Ah, <laughs> oh, we, we did. <laughs> no, I went, oh, 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 you did what he fucking <laughs> did. This is how it went. I went, "You didn't." He went, "No." And I said, so if I'm hearing you right, you want more business. You've got something that brings you new business, but you're not doing it. You ain't doing it. Oh, what the fuck is that? Right? Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, God. Devious bastard. Now, th there is there is an argument to say what's got you to where you are quite likely won't get you to where you want to be if where you want to be is substantially further on or, or bigger than you are now. So the skills you you need to, say, make a £1,000 a month are very different from the skills you need to make £10,000 a month. And to go from £10,000 a month to £100,000 a month, again, it's, it's another step change. I'll use the phrase, which I really don't like because it's, it's generally meaningless, that it's another level. At least here we're quantifying the level. When people just say, take your business to the next level, they, they they deliberately don't mention what that next level is because it's the, the way they sell it's horrible. But they don't even know what it is. if if you want to if you want to multiply your income by more than a, a factor of two or three, you you got to start doing things a bit differently. For the most part, there are some businesses I see where what they're doing works really well. So anything we tell them to do will work fabulously. Well, they they could probably ten times their income with very little change. Mm -hmm. um, but they're they're an exception. Not, not the rule. I mean, like our, our accountant client, he was an exception. He charges 10 times the going rate simply because what he was doing before was so atrociously bad. 
makes sense. Yes. And it's also because those bigger companies have leverage. So, you know, a f- absolute improvement is is huge. Although you do get the marginal return, the, the marginal gains, because the cost of acquiring customers goes up at scales. Yeah, the CAC. Yeah. Um, well, but the, the, way, the way I like to think of that is at the beginning, it's, I hate the word, but it's all hustle, hustle, hustle. Everything's a fucking hustle. It's so busy. Oh, yeah. And say this is no money, trying to make your first 5,000, 1,000 pound or whatever it is. And over here is, you know, big businesses, 10 million. All it is, I think it's a gradient from hustle to leverage. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I, I just think it's that gradient. You, you hustle less and you've, you've got increased leverage. Because at the beginning, it doesn't matter how many poor decisions you really make because you've got nothing to lose. Is as a, and each small good decision you make, it's just you know it's an extra thousand pound, it's an extra hundred pound, it's not much. This is why the uh, the eat the rich lot, the the anti work lot, the the fucking loser blue hair brigade, brigade. When they talk about why do CEOs get paid so much, you know so they sit on their ass and they make five decisions a year. It's because they've got so much leverage. If they make five good decisions. That can yeah. literally mean billions of pounds. Yeah, yeah. And those, those decisions change thousands of people's lives. Mm. And if they get it wrong, they change thousands of people's <laughs> lives. <laughs> I mean, I think it's legitimate for people, especially shareholders, to complain when underperforming or badly performing executives get paid bonuses. I get that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not a that's social not. issue. That's a company issue. Yeah, but it's still I still see why it's it grates and that's reasonable. But for people who are not shareholders to get pissy because someone's being paid money for doing a job, well, that's probably why they're not successful business owners themselves. Or well, certainly that's one reason, you know. I mean, the number of people I've 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 said about I've spoken to in the, in the, over the years, oh, I well, can't get a decent paid job. Well, why don't you become more valuable? Or, or better still, why don't you start in business? I don't want to. Well, okay, that's a choice. Now, you don't want to become more valuable by, by upskilling. You, you don't want to start your own business. Well, so what you do want is for someone to pay you in wages more than you're actually worth to that business. Yeah. Why? Why would they do that? Oh, it's about fairness and equality. No, no you're not talking about fairness there. Being Fairness is being paid what you bring in value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. what you deserve, not what you not not what you think you're worth, or what you need. Probably a better word, isn't it? What you need is irrelevant. If you need more, earn more, become more valuable. Serving so good. A good way of looking at that is is I think looking at uh, Tim Cook and Steve Jobs of Apple. So Tim Cook, I think, recently joined the two billion club, two billion net worth. Uh, Tim Cook, that's his name. I think I said Steve Cook a minute ago. That's why I got myself really in a, in a twizzle. Uh, he raised it for, to two billion from, I think like five hundred million from his previous roles. Now that is a huge increase, a massive, massive increase. If you don't understand the difference between even a hundred million and a billion, you'd like get to know it's it's ridiculous. It's, it's hard to fathom. And some people would say, "Well, why does he need that? Well, he get paid, he, he's, he's getting paid that much because the amount of value he's bringing. Apple is now the wealthiest company ever yeah, in both terms million, of and then like three both in, both in terms of valuation, but even more honourably. And this is the most impressive thing: no company ever has had more recorded cash on hand ever. So not only is it like these stupid tech companies with you know multiples yeah, of two hundred, they are." Fucking, they they are money, yeah. And he has led that growth. But Steve Jobs, who died however many years ago, I think he died with a net worth of four hundred billion, because he was the guy that started all of this. Yeah, four hundred billion didn't help him much in the end. Well, no, because he was he had cancer and he thought he'd cure it with apples, didn't he? Stupid, so, uh, especially it was an em- eminently true to move mm. So. Oh, yeah, I think really what it comes down to is is that they are emotionally just these bright shiny objects. They're emotionally driven decisions, um, which are often fueled by uh, 
unrealistic unrealistic expectations. You know, if I mm. put my post out there, it'll it could go viral. Yeah, one in a million. And if it goes viral, seeing by all these millions of people, that's got to be worth a lot of money. That's no, there's that's complete non sequitur. Um, I mean, I liken the. I mean, we, I'm not saying they're the same thing because Clubhouse appears to have died a death. I don't think threads will die a death. But I think from the, the user's point of view, I think the parallels are, are accurate. And that is, there's a lot of fucking heat and noise, but very little motion, very little happen. I don't, I'm not aware of anyone who made money from Clubhouse other than selling Clubhouse tips. Mm. Um, I haven't seen it myself, but someone told me they've already seen people selling how to get more followers on threads. Oh, yeah. Well, there's no way at the moment, there's no obvious way other than just posting and buy my shit. There's no obvious way to monetize threads anyway. There's no advertising platform, is there? Uh, no, not right now. No. So, I mean, there was a guy on LinkedIn the other day who was saying he, he, how he got 33,000 Twitter followers in like some two or three days. And I asked him one question. Okay, how many more sales did you make? No, I'm going to monetize it later in the year. So I said, well, so you are selling people tips on how to get 33,000 Twitter followers in three days, but you've got no idea of one, how to monetize it, or even if you can. Didn't reply to that. He may have brought me for all I know. But it's a legitimate question, you know? It's, how much money have you made? And if you haven't made any now, how are you planning on doing it? And, and why would anyone want 33,000 fucking Twitter followers if there's no obvious way to monetize them? And, and let's face it, you know, I don't care. One of my old clients, I won't mind name her, but she's a very high-end copywriter. She works for the likes of Google, Volkswagen. She reckons she's doing a million a year in fees. Dollars, this is. Is she? I don't know. <laughs> but I do know she's got these high-profile clients because she's a client of mine. Um, she is very attractive, very personable. She's very got a very on-brand brand. She's, she's top-notch, premium branding. She wants to become an influencer. That's something I decline to work with her on because I don't want to do it. It's not my thing. I think influencership is horrible. Um, but she had over a million views of her content on LinkedIn and she posted this publicly. A million views in six months and it did absolutely nothing for her business. Not a single dollar. Well, what whole evidence do you want that views aren't really that relevant? We've seen similar, mate. We've seen similar. You know, we walk our talk. We, we we say these things strongly, and they're not unfounded claims. We increased our viewership from probably around ten ten odd thousand views. I think our best ever month was a hundred odd thousand. Did you notice any bonuses being paid that month? No. the The only increases in business I've seen are where when we decide to make more call. Yeah, when we enter a season of sales. Yes, of course, yeah. When we go, right, do you want some more, more, more money, John? And you go, yeah. Connor, do you want some more money? And I go, yeah. All right, we know what we need. More calls. Yeah. More let's, calls. Let's crack more on. Calls. That's all it is. And so this is why you need to ignore bright, shiny objects, whether that's in the, the, sh the shape of threads. You need to put your head down and work for the long term. Bright, shiny objects are tactical and therefore short term in nature. I've never heard of someone put together, here's my 10-year social media business plan. Now, that is every time in the last years. But big companies such as Shell, yeah, they have forecasts and projections for the next 100 years. 100 years they do their forecasts in. And that's why they're the fucking biggest oil company on earth. Because they're massive. They, they think so strategically and so long term. Yeah breaks my heart when I speak to CEOs and MDs of these companies that think they're going to add an extra million yeah, to, to their top line through <laughs> social media. And it's like you were thinking so small in short term. The biggest players, the biggest winners, they're, they're thinking a long term. Think of that. 100 year forecast. Yeah, we'll all be dead by then. But they know the company won't. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> it's the point. They're thinking real long term. I mean, the thing about bright, shiny object, BSOs, they are fundamentally tactical mm. by their nature yeah 